This is the box from Juiced Bikes. Today is uh, it's the night of May 29th, 2018. They were supposed to send many parts, but I don't know what to say. like a part of the computer and the four and the one cable that's not here so just so we can um, document everything I'm taking this screw out here and I'm going to take this Allen head screw out here and that should slide this whole unit out we're changing the ECU today is uh, I think the 30th and 31st, May 30th, May 31st, but since my phone is now a camera, I can't tell. It's one or the other. I think it's the 31st. So anyway, that's what we're starting on right now, and then we're, I just undid a tie wrap here, which is right there, and we're gonna just change out totally this uh, ECU for the one that they sent. Okay. Um, just updating on progress. I've detached the four into one and the headlight, as well as the motor and the cadence slash torque sensor, which is the little one there. And I freed up all the tie wraps that were holding it to the bike. And now we're just going to. Continue on removing that screw, and then we're gonna pull the. There's another screw under here, I believe, and then we're gonna pull the ECU out and then put the new one back. All right, all right. Uh, let's see. I have the exact right Allen wrench, and there's no slippage. Not stripping it. I can't hold the. Uh, flashlight and do this at the same time but as you can see it's coming out nice and even it was a sort of a pain to get started but they use this allen uh, to make it as difficult as possible I'm convinced of it because nobody would have used an allen wrench here and a Phillips head up here <laughs> this is I want you to have multiple tools and of course, there's no one home at the design department here. Now, this whole unit should come out. There are no other screws. This is just a cover. So let me grab that screw. And... Alright, I'm going to need both hands to, to tug this thing out, so yeah. hang in there. That's out, it was just a cover. Just to cover all that mechanism there. Alright, okay, the, the long one here, long screw, Allen head screw, right there, Allen head cap screw, is the one that holds the whole mechanism in, right here. Now, we're just going to detach it from there, noting... What it says, if we can, hang on, hang on, let me do something like that so that we'll make sure that the new one is in exactly the same way. It's just the XT connector. And we'll make sure that's in exactly the same way. Okay, in order to get the wires out, I had to take this, this rubber strip. I, I think they call it the channel. Maybe it's the channel cover. <laughs> uh, and then there's a the second one right here. I don't know if you can see that. I took that one out. Let's just take this out. I'm sure it'll be impossible. Oh, there's a third one. <laughs> uh, so let's just do this in order. One, two, and three. In that order. All right. Now we should have gained access 
to everything. Here's the Cadence Torque. And over here should be the motor connector. And then these two. And everything slides right out. Very, very similar indeed to my scooter. Uh, the way things are kind of wedged in there. So, right, I need two hands. Okay. The old one is out. And uh, let's just for giggles read that. 48 volt. Hmm, interesting. That's a, uh, yeah, 20 amp. Limit current, 20 amps. Hmm. Oh, what is your problem, probably? That should be 25 or 30 amps. Well, maybe not 30, but 25 amps. Okay, now let's undo the last thing. Compare it. Okay. This is the... QC pass two. Maybe this one didn't pass QC. Yeah, no, it's got a sticker. There's the old. I'm trying to find a place for this to. All right, we'll put down over there. And here's the new. This is the new one. Looks like the same thing. It's still 20 amps. Uh, production date code. We'll just check those codes, make sure that they're somewhat the same. And all right, let's start on the install. Okay, so I have noticed something uh, in the video that they sent me on how to put this in. Um, it was in, I believe, this way with this yellow XT connector underneath it. And uh, I'm not sure if they put that in right. I'm not sure if they if they did it right. Yeah, oh, all right. <clears throat> that definitely sure appeared to be a problem because now you can easily <clears throat> slide this in and out. So who knows? Maybe that was the problem. <clears throat> Maybe the wires are broken. All right, let's okay. proceed. We're gonna reinstall the ECU and we're gonna get this back in there and then we're gonna plug the battery in before I route the wires you know with the zip ties everything is already connected I'm even going to connect no I'm not going to connect the uh, brake sensors yet and we're going to see if we get any back tire at all to spin okay all right. it's in everything went smoothly nothing stripped cross threaded or anything everything is uh torqued down to to just uh not overly tightened so it will crack plastic all right, battery is in, and uh, everything is tight. Double checked everything. You know, it's not the greatest connectors in the world. All right, power up. Power up. Please, to God, let's see. Hey, it was the ECU that was a problem. All right. Beautiful. I gotta put air on the tire. <laughs> the tire's flat. All right. That's what it was from the very beginning. What I said it was the ECU and the screwed up way the uh, factory put it in. All right. Let me uh, get to making this thing perfect. Again. Rerouting the or routing the wires and I just put the channel cover back on it's on perfectly with a small piece on the bottom a little bit of overhang as it comes out of the hole to protect Not a very good way to do it, but it's the best they can do Make sure that we have full steering No binding no nothing. I reattached the brake sensors Everything looks good. We're gonna keep going here Actually, what I should do is put the battery in and check to see if it still works. Maybe I'll Okay, be... the job is complete. We have everything working. Everything is good. It's weird. There's a noise that rubs sort of... It's not the brake 
uh, disc and, and pads hitting. But there's this... And it doesn't sound like it's coming from the buffet. It sounds like the tire is rubbing against something. And it's just, it's not. There's plenty of room up in, up in here. And uh, I don't know where the noise is coming from. There's nothing on the sides of hitting. It's not hitting a cable of any kind. This is how I routed this. I uh, routed this so that it makes sure that there's no contact at all here. I got double tie wraps, making sure it goes through the center there. So there's nothing hitting. The tie wraps are not, you know, strangling the wires either. Everything is nicely done, nice and even. This I don't like exactly the way it is, but maybe I'll reroute a little bit here. But this is this is actually proper. Uh, I just wish it was doing this. <laughs> Let's see if I can make it do that. But actually, actually, I can't do that because of this. It was designed to come out of, of here at this angle. So that's the way it's going to have to stay. Uh, I'm not going to be doing much trail riding. It's almost all tarmac. Beautiful tarmac on nice sunny days only. So I think that should be okay. And I will keep an eye on it. Uh, okay, so let me just reiterate. I did put the sensors back. Let me see if uh, that works. We'll kind of do this. I'm going to hit the throttle and nothing. Okay, good. Uh, I don't know how to hold this and do this. All right, I'm gonna have to turn this off. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty sure they had the uh, the old one in backwards. I don't know if that affected anything, but it, as you can see, the wires are bent back this way, and uh, it was in it was in like this. <laughs> and the video clearly shows that. These are not bent, and this little one, the XT connector, is underneath the unit. So that could have been a problem. Let's find out.